We're live. All right, okay. uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. This is the one we heard our ARPA Applications Review Committee meeting of May 16th, 2023. We'll start the meeting out with the pledge to the flag. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our proud flag by the exit. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So just quick for introductions for you to hear, Mike, I'm Mike Wooden, I'm the Vice Chair. With me is Jackie McNamee and Chris Reagan. Um, we're gonna start off with, I think we've already asked everyone who's here. So Community Health Center is here. So why don't we go out of order in fairness, but since he's here and we'll do the Community Health Center request first. Who would like to start the conversation? I didn't, oh, I'm not, I'm not I saw your hand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Who we say first? Sorry. Community Health Health Center. Start. Let me just find my. And, and while she's while she's uploading that, I know I said an email. Sorry, can't speak. It's just the commission or, or the committee reviewed this. So, um, but we're just making a recommendation to the uh, town council. Ultimately, the council will be awarding, or you can make your case if we were to say we don't recommend further action to the council. Okay, you're up. Sorry. That's fine, time. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. I'm just trying to find the application. Yeah, that's I was doing the same thing. I was hoping you were to beat me to it. Eight people think additional information, not the actual. I'm just. I'm going to go with this one because I know this is it. So. Um, community health care center is a primary health care system um, It's caring for special populations, improving health outcomes and building a healthier, healthier communities. It's been established in 1972 as a nonprofit. Um, their primary mission is to focus and focus on clinical excellence. They engage in research, practice transformation, training and the next generation of leaders. What they are asking for, although they are located in Middletown, mm -hmm. um, and um, working to provide high quality, affordable health care to vulnerable populations across the state of Connecticut, um, typically low income, non white, and are the best served in the language other than English. Um, during the pandemic, hold on. Um, obviously, we know that COVID-19, you know, amplified um, all the resources that I'm sure that they provided. Come on, so hold on, let me keep telling what they're looking for. Um, so what they're doing is they want to allow um, their program to reach out to Wallingford residents that are no longer engaged with healthcare by providing a mo mobile healthcare unit um, to eliminate the barriers like uh, transportation convenience stigma. Um, so they want to have a van that um, travels to Wallingford and meet patients where they are, will create safe space for the engagement, um, particularly vulnerable populations, the LGBTQ community, people living with HIV, racial and ethnic minorities, individuals experiencing housing insecurity, veterans, they're requesting $317,272.94 from the city of Wallingford. They will use the ARPA funds to purchase a mobile health unit, which can provide health care and referrals to Wallingford residents. They will also use the grant to pay for a nurse practitioner and a medical assistant at 40% um, full-time employee, which each staff to the mental health unit and provide services to the Wallingford residents. Um, so high risk neighborhoods. So they, they do have a list of what they want to use the money for. Um, the funds will purchase the mental health unit to deliver services to Wallingford residents, um, a nurse practitioner and medical assistance to staff the medical health unit. Um, purchase a vehicle with modification for medical services at $216,294. Um, 
that's based upon a quote from the vendor, personnel and nurse practitioner at 52,000, um, medical assistant at 19,000, indirect costs 28,000, indirect costs, uh, federal nonprofit rate. It, it, it's certainly a detailed application. Mm -hmm. um, I guess some of my questions would be, um, I mean, when I first looked at this, it, it's a great idea. Um, my concerns are the nurse practitioners don't make $52,000 a year. They make probably two hundred dollars to $300,000 a year. Um, can they continue to maintain the program after it, um, if we give them the money, can it continue in future years? Um, the access, um, I mean, there's there's so many, right now there's CVS, there's Walgreens, there's uh, Rite Aid, there's all the walk-in clinics, um, the mental health, I get it 100%. Um, the only thing with that is a lot of times with um, the mobile health in these situations, it's it's usually interns, so it's not a stable uh, mental health provider. You know, they come in, they do their internships for probably 18 months, maybe a little bit less, a little bit longer, and then, well, then what happens? Are they transferred to another intern and another intern? So it's not providing like the consistent care that they may need. Um, it's definitely great for the quick, hey, I ran out of prescriptions and I need my meds. That's definitely really, that's that's positive and it's great. The quick shots or immunizations are great. But in saying that, we still have CVS ready right, and all those. Um, how many days a week is it going to be in here? And I, I believe I did read that. I think I read two times, but I could, I could be confusing that with another application. So... Right. Does anyone, do you yeah. So we have one event per month uh, for outreach and education. We've got a weekly use for HIV rapid testing, prep education, flu clinics, COVID vaccination clinics, blood pressure, IV screening events. Goal is six flu clinics per year, six screening clinics per year, full of opportunities for rapidation and testing and education. Um, so, you know, it, it also, they got our book from Hartford, Meriden, and Middletown to provide additional services. And so, Two things. I notice there's a lot of partner partnerships with right. organizations in town. So I could say that, you know, Masters Mana, Wallingford Parks, Scow, uh, Scow um, and, and never mind the the um, the other uh, statewide agencies such as CT Coalition to End Homelessness, um, the Dennis, the Wallingford office. I mean, so I mean, it's yes, I could say that it provides service to the town, Absolutely. to residents of the town. I agree with your concern about, you know, um, long-term viability, but then I also look at, if you look in phase two of their plan, so under the heading timeline, and they get into talking about in 4C, you know, you're, you're deploying, you're conducting documentation, and then 5A is, is phase five and 5A, is sustainability, so 12 months. So a year from now, they're looking to utilize data and kind of lessons learned, deploy continuous. So they're kind of acknowledging that that as we get off the ground with this program, we're going to figure out a way to make it sustainable. At least that's how I'm reading it. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I had the same concern that you had, like, you know, structuring it, it's, it's going, it, is it something that's going to be, because this is, this is an important service. So I will, and I will say that this service is consistent with ARPA. That shouldn't be mm -hmm. in, in a um, consideration. Um, and I was grading it with a program proposal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. At, yeah, they're five dollars each. Okay, yeah, next week. No problem. It, you um, know, in addition to that, um, I often utilize the mobile health units in New Haven, and they are, you know, it's they were amazing. I mean, hey, when people were walking, people were able to get there. I was able to send my clients there. So in that aspect, yes. 
They're Chris, awesome. They're very helpful. They're essential to them. I hate them at the end of the day. Yeah. Chris, I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, Do you have no, anything no. to add? No, absolutely. I am. Um, so let's look at a couple of items before we score it. Mm -hmm. um, indirect costs um, would not be covered under ARPA, so that 28000 should be removed from, from consideration, in my opinion, based on, you know, it's just such a vague non that it could be used for what? We have other applications that are asking for 30000 that have a detailed business plan associated with it, um, but that you know, indirect cost is somewhat, or not is, but does not have <clears throat> The, the defining component which says that's an ARPA qualified expense. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, taking a look at that. Mm -hmm. From a personnel standpoint, um, agree with Jackie as far as, you know, is it 40% of the FTE salary for a third of a person's time on a per week basis? Maybe if you, if you lump it all together and, and consider it, um and then you've got the you know, you've got the question um of uh servicing only to law and for residents um versus um using it for other times for other communities not even connected communities you know west hartford you know, mm -hmm. for example but but to 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 go through those so um i think as part of our due diligence, from my opinion, it's something that the council should be able to have an open question and answer um, set of conversations about intended uses, about how are we moving forward, expand the business plan than otherwise than a, than a, a poorly um, uh, devised application that that we have to that we, that we have to follow. So, you know, I would um, uh, score it probably um, underpassing mm -hmm. um, from my standpoint. But I'm also more inclined to abstain from voting on this one as well, forcing the council to take it up if they so choose. Um, and that's the conversations with the, that, the individual council members, et cetera. And the council is more than, than uh, seemingly more than happy to to review these on a on a case by case basis for more information, especially considering the dollar amount associated with it. Um, so, so you know we can do two things. Um, you know we can score it. Yeah. Um, um, to see how that ends up. Um, or we can choose not to score, and a few of us may, you know, abstain if that's the right course of action. And the others think that along the same lines. I, I would prefer to give, in fairness, to the applicant to give them the ability to make their case with the council okay. rather than give a negative <laughs> referral, because um, this is a large ask. And like you said, it, there's a lot of moving parts with it. And I think I agree. I, everything that you said, I, I'm, I'm on board with that. I mean, as far as as far as um, you know, the dollar amount of the um, uh, of the van of the modified, however it is to to be set up, the rules associated with that dollar amount of spend, the number of quotes that are necessary, the amount of documentation, and then the whole other aspect of how um, the question of you're you need uh, approximately 120 days to get the Department of Health okay for a, a licensing standpoint. What if that's a no? What if there's additional modifications to the the unit? What if there's you know go back and rethink the plan? But I mean that that variable um, should we? Just improve, go ahead and buy it, and we hope that it gets mm -hmm. that, that it gets licensed. You know, the backlog, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. So, so something can be written by legal that from a contractual basis that 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 
you know, that that can easily meet um, both requirements. That, I'm not going to say easily. That legal is for is um, has been willing to in past applications to review. So, um, that's good. I agree. Agree. Okay. Because all three of us are in agreement then. So maybe we were very creative on this motion. Um, rather than go ahead, Chris. Do you look like you're, you're on a roll right now? No, I mean, as far as do we need to make a motion to have them consider it? We haven't done that. We haven't done We've that. We've abstained, and then it's theirs by default. I would, I think, I would prefer well, rather than rather than abstaining is is actually make a motion to put it on their radar and say, listen, this really needs to be reviewed by you because of the fall. Um so uh, it like, meets the ARPA guidelines. However, there's many questions that we have. So that they should set with the input of legal. So I would like to make a motion that the committee um, takes no action on the evaluation of the application and refers it to the town council to ask the applicant for more information. Period. Okay. Second. All right. Does that work? That works for me. I think that'll that'll get it. Like I said, and I'll talk, I'll, I'll explain it to Janice because Janice Small ultimately is going to be the gatekeeper. Yep. So, okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So that passes three nothing. So you're off to the council. Janice Small Law Department. Which you would be anyway. Yes. Okay. Um, so don't take this as like, and please, I'm not trying to scare either one of you. Let me look, see this going on. Okay. Thank you. Well, look forward to making the case with them. Yes. Uh, yeah. We'd like you. to be fair with you on that. Certainly. Thank, Thank you. you. So the next group that's here on session one is uh, Meriden Wong for Chris Lewis. Chris Lewis. Chris Lewis. <clears throat> I was hoping you would say it. Yeah, I think I may have another piece of paper, please. Sorry. Yes, but hold on. Which one is it? Is this a. This is project two, I believe. Does it program. Want to come, program, yeah. So. Okay. I come on, is they disappear. I don't understand. Is there another name for it? Meriden Wally for I forget what I was going for. Thank you. So sorting out the chair is less than desirable. Yeah, it's not fun. Okay. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want me to go? Do you want to go? Oh, okay. Oh, you, you're ready? I'm yeah. going to jump out there. Sure. Uh, Chrysalis, Meriden Wallingford, Chrysalis Inc. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, uh, provides uh, a needed service in these times. So uh, they're headquartered in Meriden, uh, but they service the Wallingford community historically. Uh, we have a detailed application associated with the needs uh, for emergency housing, security, positive assistance, et cetera, to try to get people um, on their feet, back on their feet, or those that are in need, uh, the services that are required from everything from transitional housing, temporary housing, um, uh, et cetera, uh, is not a uh, long-term, uh, program for these people it is considered a short term bridge, uh, my word, bridge program uh, to, to help those who are in need. We have a lack of beds in this community. We have a lack of transitional types mm -hmm. of services. We do, uh, we do have a, uh, a problem uh, within the town um, that the services that this organization um, you know, to provide the application is very well thought out. Um, can I, I'm sorry, I don't we can't. No, unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, you know, taking a look at um, 
short term, medium term, long term goals, taking a look at um, their um, um, self uh, reporting um, that they receive funding from our sister community in Meriden. I would have a problem. Um, passing this application as a program. Agreed. Pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I agree. My only question is there is a huge, huge need for this. I mean, I'm on the phone constantly, 211. It's a joke at this point. You don't even waste your time calling, said respectfully, because there's no beds, there's nothing available. So I'm 100% in agreement. My only concern is is there a way that we can somehow guarantee that this amount of money goes to Wallingford Town um, women? So, so we could make yes. a recommendation similar to the YMCA that the program, that the uh, money associated with this request, this program is only to be used for um, individuals, households in Wallingford or yes. Wallingford residents, I should say. Right. So that would, that would be the safety measure, which then should the council adopt it, it would be part of their contract with the town of Wallingford and the award of the grant. So I have two slots right now. <laughs> Stop recording. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I think you got someone to contact you. Um, I'm just going to go over quick the scoring sheet as everyone just writes up the scores. Mm -hmm. So the not for profit program requests and the needs requests are supposed to get a score for a positive referral of 75 or higher. So we have for, for the pro, the program proposals, there are three um, areas you're grading. One is the required it meets COVID um, based on the standards of ARPA. That's if you don't meet that, you didn't get to our agenda. Next is for 50 points is the purpose program detailed goals expected outcomes are clearly described. Demonstrated the need those in Wallingford who are impacted by the pandemic. The applicants demonstrated experience that's for 50 points. Now for 25, the proposed budget is appropriate. Basically, you have supporting documentation. Any additional funding is secured. A high percentage of requested funds are being used to direct costs, program costs compared with the number of people served are appropriate. Lastly, for 25 points, is the program ready to be implemented? If not, what is the timeline reasonable? Will it be completed by 10-31-24? With that being said, I think this is a pretty straightforward one. Yeah. yeah. What what's your number? My number is I gotta add um oops. In fact, that's easy. That's easy. I didn't even need my calculator for that one. So, um, with that being said, you got an average score 85. You pass. It's for positive. Do I have a motion to send a positive referral to town council for the award of $76,073? I'd like to make a motion to refer. Meriden Wallingford Chrysalis Inc. application uh, for, for a positive recommendation on the application of total of $76,073.76,073. Do we want to entertain the condition that this is specific to uh, Wallingford? households with the condition that the services be provided to Wallingford residents. Okay. Sorry, Chris. Mm -hmm. Have a second? Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. You're all set with us tonight. You just got to got the eyes crossed, please. Okay, yeah, so well, it's an old card. Oh, I can't get the phone just to what was saying. Nothing's changed. Thank you. Okay, okay. and you're the <laughs> sisters project, right? Yes. 
Okay. I could do this one if you want. Got the next one. Oh, you're good. Ah, so yeah. you're like jumping. I'm like, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Aaron had a long travel to join us today, right? <laughs> Very long. I just had to find the unlocked door. Um, so the sisters project is a community. They're asking for twenty five thousand. Oh, there's two. That's right. There's two in this one. Yeah. They're asking for twenty five thousand for one, and then another. Hold on, it's on a different. Separated. Hundred and two. Yes. Okay. Um. So one hundred and two. Um. What they do is it's a nonprofit that um assists the needs of patients and their families and and impacted by cancer. I do. I am aware that they pro provide meals, copays, lawn service, transportation. A hundred percent of the money that they get goes back into the community for families. Um who have someone in their family who's suffering from cancer, diagnosed with cancer. Um, they, due to COVID, a lot of their fundraisers were um, stopped. So they weren't able to, to raise a lot of their money um, over the past few years. Um, their their um, program is amazing. So for me, it's a high pass. Um, yes. The clarification of the dollar amount here. Yeah, it's twice. But I don't know why I'm not finding it. I have time. 102, 102 is what I was saying. Okay. Total. Um, people are putting it in both A and B. So I don't see the 25,000 that you're looking at. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, maybe I'm at 25, 25, 25. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Are there two? Yeah, because there's you have the online application and the regular one. Both say 102. Mm -hmm. I mean the amount doesn't maybe it was the Request funding total cost of one five. So fifty. But I read somewhere else 102. So I know that you guys it's one. Okay. Which one's that? Is that the incomplete one? Maybe that's what you're that's probably what I'm looking at. Okay. Yes. Because you're the, looking the, at the, the top file that has all the supporting documentation with the application is the one that we should be considering. Correct. Here it is, cool. 100. So they're requesting 102. Um, I have nothing more to add. Wonderful organization doing wonderful things, absolutely in the spirit of this program. Agreed. And I think we're ready to go with this, right? Mm -hmm. Are we scoring it as a program? Yes. Program, yes. Ninety for me. Ninety, ninety, one hundred. Ninety-three point three. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the Scissors Project application for one hundred and two thousand um, dollars. So recommend that we recommend um, that we, sorry, so I'd like to make a motion um, on behalf of the Sisters Project to the Wallingford Town Council to consider the application uh, as a positive referral in the amount of 102000 Second. 
All right, all those in favor? Aye. All right, you're set for that, Aaron. Good night. I can just sit around for the preservation and volunteer the Okay. I'm going to do that one now. We can yeah. do that okay, one. Can do that other one. You're here. Why not? You're here. I'm just curious stuff. Jerry or anybody did say they were calling, right? No. no. I know. That's why I don't want to take it out of order because someone's coming. No, Jerry never responded to my email. There right, we go. All right. I'll take a stab at this one. Join the fun. So we have the Wallingford Historic Trust, uh, Historic Preservation Trust. They are looking for $30,000. And the request is for, this is, uh, well, it's it's basically repairs, prep ground surface. This is, this is for the uh, Johnson Mansion Silver Museum. Um, it, it's exterior improvements to the existing building. Obviously, this is an organization that, just like everyone else, cursed COVID, their fundraising efforts that would probably maintain these type of activities was impacted by, by COVID. Um, the I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I, I actually scored this not as a programming, but as a um, need, an assistance for proposal. So, I mean, like I said, it's it's maintaining a, an existing historical asset. They provide, you know, it's a museum also. Some people don't understand it, this one, but um, those of us who've been here for a while know. Um, that's it, really. I mean, like I said, it's a, the request, the total is... Thirty thousand, and they have a pretty big. Uh, the app can provide a, a very detailed, at least the activity that will be occurred. And you know, um, obviously, with the assistance with legal, when they get to a contract, they're going to have to go through the get three quotes to do this. So um, it's like I said. Any questions on this one? I uh, am. Um... Um, is it thirty thousand? It appears to be fifteen. It says it twice. Finding oh, you know what? That's weird. It's the exact. It's exact. Verbiage. But then it says, so it says the same verbiage of 15, but on the right hand side, the total cost of the project is 30,000. Right, which infers that they're covering 15. They're, they're, they're covering 15. Okay. The other. Take back my comment on. Oh, sorry. You go back to the uh, first. They're operating at uh, $14,055 uh, $14, deficit. So that would um reason why they don't re request 15. 15 covers the cost to do the work on the building they otherwise would have paid for it it wasn't for the impacts of COVID. So, All right, and we've got 10,000 plus 5,000. One of the sharp grant and the other for Connecticut Cultural Fund. Mm -hmm. So it appears that it is 15. So, so I'll just I'll amend what I said. They're asking fifteen, but otherwise, the balance in the comment. Thanks for keeping me honest there. Very open to purse strings. Uh, anything else on this one? Like I said, based on a uh, assistance proposal. Yeah. So I don't know. Might as well uh, score it.
What's your number? My number is 85. Sorry, I'm an oddball on this one. I'm going to start using the other one. Right. I mean, like, Carl, Carl, 90, uh, 91, or he had the silliest number sometimes. 88.3. Okay. So that passes. That's the re positive report. Recommendations to Thank Council. You. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the application of the Law and for Historic Preservation Trust in the amount of $15,000 to the Council. For the amount of? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm bad. Second that one. Don't want to restate it? No, it's fine. I got it. No worries. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, okay. Back to the beginning. All right. Let's go back to the collaboration of Minority Women Foundation. And that would be a program request, which is um, that's the program request. If I recall, the organization is partnered with the New Haven Arts Council. They provide child care assistance. I recall to, yeah. is that the one? Nope. No. No? That was part of it. That, that was part, part of, of it. it. Yeah. Ah, here we go. So their project they're requesting is 30,000. Oh, yeah, 25. Total, total cost. cost. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're, giving, they're covering 5,000. Initial 5,000 already received by grant with the Community Foundation of Greater New Haven. Okay, so they are looking to do Kitty co working program. They will reach Black and minority businesses, helping close gaps. They are also, as part of this, the program allows Black and minority caregivers to network, attend classes, meet with mentors, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, it's a kind of um, mentoring program and, and, and assistance. Uh, the program uh, addresses also the child care needs associated with these particular um, populations. So, and it's aimed really at minority women business owners. Um, I know that, I think they just did something with SCAL recently, where they have something planned with SCAL. So this is, a, this is an organization, although based out of New Haven, they do serve the community. That was um, my concern. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's fine. Because that was my concern too. And then I did a little digging on this and was able to see that they actually they actually have activities that occur in town. So just like with the why, my only concern would be is that any should we say that this is consistent with ARPA recommend funding, there really should be consideration that this is only to be spent in activities within Wallingford. So the money doesn't go out to New Haven, North Haven, wherever. Um, because it is, you know, it's job training, it's mentoring. It's like, it hits a lot of things that are really um, consistent with ARPA. Just like, yes. like I said, I want to make sure the bucket's not leaking too much. That, that was my concern, just that it's located in New Haven. I was wondering how often they have meetings in Wallingford, how many Wallingford residents do participate in this? Do our Wallingford residents aware of this? Wallingford business owners, are they aware of it? Um, and then one thing on the budget, um, was it overhead expenses? Um, there was something that I don't remember that I was wondering if ARPA covered that. Was it fundraising? Was this the one that had fundraising? Overhead expenses. Or wait, is this one that they wanted to save the money for a different for different year? So overhead expenses don't seem to. This is similar. Didn't Scal did they 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 requested like a ten percent over overage? Remember, am I losing my mind on that one? 
Very similar. Somebody did. I don't Some, think it was a scout because we approved scout in totality. I think it was two hundred twenty-one. Yeah. So, someone. Someone may, else. United did, Way, maybe. We, we also just said no to that. That was labeled as uh, or indirect, town hall that lot. was indirect costs. Who said that? I don't know. Who's, hold on. I don't know who this is. Hey. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jerry. We. <laughs> I'll come right down. I'll come right down right now. But Jerry, we actually just finished reviewing the trust application and uh, made a positive referral to the council. Okay, I will. I will come down and get get them. I, that's weird. Is is the the automatic door not opening? You have a slider. You have to go to the slider. Okay, uh, I will come right down. We'll take a quick two minute break recess. Thank you. Bye. Sorry about that. Sure. Why is it still on the phone? I'll take a motion to uh, yeah. take a two minute recess. Second. All in I'll favor? I I'd like to make a motion that we take a five minute recess. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
So, so go ahead with your observation. Are you back on? We're on. Me? We're back. What you just brought up. So, my only question they have a very, you know, they have a great budget outlined what they're going to use with the funds. However, above in the um, in the paragraph above it, it says um, a portion of these funds will be invested in interest earning accounts to continue growing as the organization grows. That's not outlined in um, their request. You know, the total project is thirty thousand. It doesn't say where, you know, how much they're going to invest. But I also know that with um, the ARPA money, it can't. It has to be used within the Right. Well, so let me counter that. Oh, if the second. applicant thought that they would be receiving, so first, this is program, correct? Yes. So as a program, they will need to provide the details. Each of the individual categories, whether or not they're in the if they're if, if they think that the whole thirty thousand, and I don't know if, if that is actually going to be the case, but if the whole thirty thousand is going to be used and it's going to be issued or or uh, filled out during a period of six, twelve eight months, etc., then it's viable that you. Would you put that money in the bank in an interest bearing account as a prudent thing to do as a, as a business? Um, my, um, I think as far as this one, I'm a bottom of the fence, let's say just a barely passing. Um, and the contingencies need to be put in place similar to the others that it be explicitly for Wallingford residents and or businesses. The issue is, is that there is a high degree of reliance on the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce assistance advertising, et cetera, to drive people to the program, which is not just one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I think I'm, a, I'm okay with passing it with the conditional use wrapper. licensed child care venues as far as refreshments and all of the the, the media pieces etc the event planner I mean, those things are you know are they job postings are they funding somebody that's already there i would assume you know they, they've also they've talked about you know they, they will be hiring uh, you know, within a uh, black business as far as the photographer is concerned, et cetera. So yeah, I think I'm a I I, I think I'm a pass with the contingent wrapper on the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it says the goals support at least one black or minority owned venue location. So and they meet quarterly. So can the venue location be, you know, in Wallingford? Too. Well, but if it's for Wallingford businesses to meet and it happens to be the North Haven, whatever the hotel is off of you know, mm -hmm. Group Five, who cares? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not to keep go bring it up somewhere why you just have to make sure that any activities funded mm -hmm. is primarily goes to Wallingford okay. residents. And I agree. Okay. With that caveat, it's a, it's a pass. It's not a strong pass, it's a pass. Okay. So, on that note, let's. Uh, May I have another one? Do you want to speak this? No. Yeah, I'll put her. Thank you. So, all right, I had one out. 
Um, I found this letter to record this whole conversation. Document. 76.6. Okay. So I would like to make a motion to recommend the application of CMWP Foundation in the amount of $25,000 be referred to the town council to consider the impact of funding is used for Wallingford residents and or business people. Second. Sorry, I'm getting so late. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Up we go. So we got next up. I don't mess over here. Yeah, me too. But it's table size. I just it's too small to get. It's not if there was four or seven. You guys are worth the same. All right, so we are on to the literacy volunteers of Greater New Haven. Oh, yeah, you got it. I'll take St. Paul's. Okay. Okay. Um, Sorry, Jeff. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Worthy organization, the application is a worthy organization, and my opinion, they provide um, a nursery school um, for hundreds, if not thousands, of their families over its 60 years in existence. There was an extreme COVID impact due to both um, uh, the state and federal guidelines for closing down as well as the church guidelines in which they're housed um, were also impacted. They are asking for a, both a um, assistance uh, application uh, or uh, funding request in the amount of $23,000 um, with a labeled uh, project as far as uh, indoor maintenance, classroom resupply, and updating as far as playground uh, pieces, etc. Um, those are ready to go um, uh, upon uh, approval. They are also asking for an additional $16,000 in creating uh, a scholarship program um, that is flexible. It will either be used uh, for assistance for four students um, at a, a cost of $4,000, uh, totaling $16,000, or partial scholarships for 16 students for 16 um, people at uh, $1,000 a piece uh, for $16,000, or any combination thereof. Um, they um, are um, a, a worthy organization. Uh, can't say anything more positive having children who've gone through the system. Um, uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, and I'd like to see them continue their good work. So it's a, it's a high approval for me. I agree. 
Okay. I, I don't have anything to add. It's a great program. It's a wonderful program. And I love that they're adding a scholarship because people can't afford food and they need to work in order to afford food and the scholarships mm -hmm. will greatly impact some family members. Agreed. So, so how do we score this? Twice? So I have one of these. Once? Make them do, there's no combo app, so I guess we have to do it on weekend. Or we just call it all systems. Can call it all systems because the, I mean, maintenance, uh, refurbishment, painting, the landscaping requirement. I mean, landscaping in general wouldn't be, but this is for a playground. Yeah. Um, so absolutely safety issues and everything associated with all of that fencing and everything I would say is, is, is all part of it, including the, the place groups and everything else. So we could just do this all as an assistance proposal and score it as such. We can do two proposals um, individually. I don't think we can do one as a program only. Yeah, that's, I was just to say straight assistance. That's I mean, assistance. it scores high, so. This is what for 38? 39. 39. 95. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Well, that easily passes. So I'd like to make a motion to recommend the application of St. Paul's Nursery School in the amount of 39,000 uh, be referred to the town council. Second. For approval. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. You're all set. Do you want to jump into Gaylord or do you want to do literacy? Yes. Gaylord's here. Gaylord's here. So okay. Here. All right. So Gaylord is asking, this is a big ask. $1.2 million total, right? Make sure I'm saying that right. There's a lot of different moving parts associated with this. Um, renovation projects. Um, there, there's a you know, the, the total cost of the project is $13 million. Um, I don't know what's, this is one of those ones in the beginning that I've asked why myself, Bob Gross and Amy Wall said that we'd like to interview certain applications. This, this is very complicated. Um, there's portions of this, of the request that are, may not be uh, eligible for ARPA funding. Um, there are portions which are. There's, um, I know that the probably members of the council will have a question of the level of service that provided the town, town of Wallingford, or the citizens of Wallingford. Um, so I mean, the amount I won't, of money that's being asked for, can, uh, we cannot, in, as far as my opinion, and I think I'm echoing what you're saying, is we can't do the due diligence on, on this one. Um, that regardless of what we say, it needs and will have the amount of scrutiny associated with it at a council level. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think similar to an earlier one, we are, are, are not in the position to approve or deny. We are just merely telling which which 
is a recommendation regardless. So, you know, there, there, there's the mechanism on which the council can can, uh, can choose to, to further review. And, you know, we, we encourage people to do so. Um, as far as that is concerned, I would have liked to echo what you said, you know, a formal presentation. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at all of the pieces. You've got the multitude of contractor quotes. The uh, how the how the federal government guidelines of how the funding can be used should be used. Multiple quotes. How it's reviewed and all of that stuff. I don't know that I can do anything else but check this out. Um, I think so. that in fairness to the applicant through just the scope and size of the request, I don't want to sit here and get, make a positive recommendation and then a more detailed conversation occurs where someone brings up something that says, oh, this is a game thing that is a hard no. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to the, the, the time that, that went into this application and really it's a legislative decision of the council. Yes. I agree. Um, so so I'd like to make a motion that we take no further action on the Gaylord Hospital application and that it be referred to the town council for consideration. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So there you're off to the council. <laughs> Good luck. Which you would be able. Yes. No worries. You know, um, it's obviously an ambitious um, project that I can work. And, you know, like with anything, if you don't ask, you don't get. And, you know, it's our for money. We like so to be fair to you. That's why yeah, we're, we're, that's why asking. we're, I know, but we like, yeah. we like to be fair with you. And that's why we'd like the mm -hmm. council to really yeah. weigh in. No, I that. appreciate it. It's Probably the exact same conclusion I would have come through. <laughs> <laughs> We're not punting. We're not punting on this one. Yeah. Here, are, there are nine elected officials that you exactly. Yeah, absolutely. No, and um, also gives your your organization the ability to have a conversation and present your case. Yeah. Which, like I said, I wish we could have done that tonight. Yeah. Oh, no worries. Okay. But thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I appreciate it, and we'll bring you back and let them know our next steps. I'm sorry the door was locked. Yeah, I know. We, <laughs> yes. we did, you know. Yep. It was a surprise, though. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all for thank you. Thank you for I know it's for you being the last three. <laughs> the best three. The best three, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, um, we do appreciate the time you joined. For your children's names, because I'm going to see Mr. Jeff, who probably will be there. and I'll read. All right, I will see. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. All, you. all right. Good luck tonight. So we're down to literacy volunteers of Greater New Haven. Literacy volunteers is looking for funding in the amount of seventy five hundred dollars as part of a total cost of the project being one hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars for their work in our town, serving a significant number of students, uh, but not just students, for anybody who does the uh, assistance uh, in, their, in their programs. Um, they are looking for uh, funding to continue uh, their outreach coordinator position uh, specifically with engaging adults in basic literacy and English speaking for other languages courses. Uh, they have an outline of how much the outreach coordinator would cost. Uh, they are roughly asking for half of that money, uh, $7,500 of $15,000 for this individual. Um, they are a much needed, very helpful uh, organization to this town and its members and its, uh, and its citizens, and it's a strong pass for me. I agree, it's a strong pass for me. They're only asking for half of it, and they do great work in our community, and it is much needed these days, so it's a high pass for me as well. 
summed it up for me too. It serves a needed population, a vulnerable population, and consistent with ARPA. So, with that being said, I'm a 90. So I'd like to make a motion to recommend the application of literacy volunteers of Greater New Haven in the amount of $7,500 be referred to the town council for positive action. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. With that being said, at 737, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I'd like to make motions with that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay.